Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Citizen Tech Talk episode. Today guys, I thought I might do something a little bit different. Um, as you've seen the studio in its current state, obviously there's some things that need to get fixed up. Uh, firstly, the green screen uh, is my first project uh, of part of setting up the uh, studio finally. So guys, what I've done, I've gone down to Bunnings. Um, I don't know what you guys in America have in relation to uh, hardware stores, mine in town or something. Uh, and um, I've gone and got myself some stuff. Now, I already had some Gorilla Grip, Gorilla Grip glue, and I'll just get a close in on that one. Okay, so Gorilla Grip is probably the one I use the most. Uh, it's great with any kind of wood, including teak. And if you know anything about wood, teak's very soft, uh, and this actually won't actually damage teak either. So, and super strong grip, it's fantastic stuff, and it also sets clear. So a uh, really fantastic uh, wood glue, and we'll be using that today to butt up the joints. Uh, I'm not doing any cornicing or any, or any 45 degree angles or any butterflies or any of that kind of crazy ducktail stuff. I'm keeping it simple stupid because at the end of the day, this frame is going to be sitting behind the screen anyway and never be seen. Okay, so that's that one. My favourite tape on earth, good old gaff tape, or in this case it's cloth tape. Uh, made by a company called Bear, it's just cheap stuff, but hey, you know, at the end of the day, gaff tape fixes everything, just ask me if busters. Okay, cool. So, that's that one. Also, I've got two different types of brackets. So, obviously, uh, for those of you that do any handiwork around home, this is going to be pretty obvious, uh, the kind of thing that you're going to use. Uh, at the end of the day, it's um, just your yeah, 90 degree angle brackets, your flat brackets, and they're going to hold, obviously, the frame together. And also, because I'm attaching this to something which is a bit unorthodox, uh, it's actually um, an old coffee table. So it's a metal frame coffee table. I'll actually show you it before we uh, attach uh, these clips onto it. Um, but it's bulky, it's got sharp corners, and it's a total nightmare. I've got a fantastic wood teak coffee table anyway, which is going to go and place in the living room. And I'm going to make some use of this uh, horrible old metal coffee table once and for all. Uh, and not bash any more legs on the corners by using these. So these will go through the top of the frame, which I'll demonstrate to you, uh, and then I'll drill these in from the bottom, and then the top side of the 90 degree bracket, so you can get an idea of that, where the wood will run across. We'll then screw into the wood, holding it in place, with gaffer tape, making sure it stays in place on the whole entire side of both sides of the angle bracket. Gaff tape's the bomb. Okay. What else you'll need? Okay, so you're going to need uh, some separate type of screws. Actually, wood screws are your best bet. These are brass wood screws, uh, cheap as anything. Same thing, Bunnings. Uh, super cheap. They will hold the back of the screen on uh, with obviously some uh, uh, foam rubber tape I've got, which I'll show you in just a moment, uh, that I'm using as well, just to pad it and to make sure the fabric stays on. The fabric is thin and it is um, not very strong. So we want to make sure we're reinforcing that at the back too. So once we pull the actual green screen taut, this green screen is going to obviously stay in place and not uh, become a problem in future uh, with sagging and so on, because last thing you want is a saggy green screen. Hey ladies. Anyway, so <laughs> moving on. Um, also a drill bit, uh, which is obviously for the screw heads, the screw head drill bit, as well as a drill and obviously a drill bit itself. Uh, this is obviously to pre-drill the holes in the wood because the kind of wood we're using is a uh, semi-hardwood, pine. Uh, in some respects, I'm not too actually sure of the composition of the wood. I'm not a wood specialist, I'm not a carpenter. Uh, but cheap drill, this is from Kmart. Now you guys have Kmart in America, another Walmart purchase. Uh, $26 and I got this and um, some other screwdrivers and stuff. Fantastic little pack. And look, you don't have to spend heaps of money uh, on expensive drills just to do DIY projects around your home. I know a lot of YouTubers use expensive Ryobis and Matikas and stuff like that. Um, look, Makitas, whatever you want to call it. End of the day, it's a drill. It works. Uh, the battery pack's on charge at the moment because we put some bed, uh, beds together for the kids and obviously uh, the old wrist and arm get a bit sore screwing in manually. So uh, this one runs battery down, but look at that. It even comes with screw attachment uh, with the actual drill. What I've gone and done is actually purchase um, some other bits, cheap as anything, once again, Bunnings, fantastic. So um, guys, look, at the end of the day, all you're going to need left is a pencil and a pen. Reason why the pen, young fella, did a fantastic diagram for me. I'll get him to, uh, to zoom in for me. 
Great, so fantastic. So he's done a fantastic job here. We've got the frame, we've got the uh, the angle brackets, we've also got the 90 degree brackets, the green screen, and how it all is going to stick together. Um, and pretty good effort. Uh, so yeah, the young fellow's my cameraman today, so give him a, a round of applause. So it's his first time, and he's doing a fantastic job so far. Okay, so. These are the doubts. Now, you don't need anything really stronger than this for a green screen. The green screen itself probably weighs about 300 grams, if that, uh, maybe 400 grams at most, depending on the size of your green screen. I've got quite a large one. I actually went to a company called Spotlight in Australia. I think you guys have Spotlight in America as well. They're a textiles uh, place where you can get all types of stuff for your house and your bathroom your kitchen. And um, yeah, the actual um, uh, fabric I used, I actually had to get some hem glue tape and actually hem the two uh, rolls of fabric together because obviously they're on a um, on a bolt and you know you can't get a piece that one piece that big but as you can see the green screen works perfectly and the seam is um, invisible on cam so that's all that matters uh, but these are the, the frames I'm using so it's going to be a 1.8 by 1.8 by 1.8 by 1.8 square simple square as it's going on the coffee table I'm going to get that additional height so then I can then use the camera to view over to his computer uh, as well as obviously my normal setup at the moment um, to make sure that the green screen is always working perfectly and then when I need to move it when I'm doing the review set it's easy to move at that time too really really simple really easy all of this minus the drill and the other bits and bobs today that I've bought which is the wood the brackets the 9 degree brackets and the gaff tape cost me under $30. So guys, it is super, super cheap <coughs> to do a super high quality green screen yourself at home. Uh, the additional costs, obviously, for your green screen, the additional costs for your drill and your bits and all that type of stuff, glue, uh, are obviously additional extras. But at the end of the day, um, if you've already got that stuff, and most people have this stuff lying around your home in your garage, you just don't realise it. So go have a look first. Go check out your garage and you know, make sure that uh, you've got all this other stuff you probably do already anyway. And um, everyone's got gaff tape in their garage. <laughs> Everyone. Uh, I've got, a, you know, this is a separate roll I bought today because I've actually just used the last of it trying another method, uh, which I'll show you shortly, which just simply is not going to work uh, for all intensive purposes. So yeah, gaff tape, always have some in your house, two bucks, 18 at uh, Bunnings for all the Australian customers. And um, look, it's a fantastic investment always to have around your house, it fixes everything. It's limitless applications. All right guys, so um, that ends this part of the video, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to the next part. I'm gonna start, uh, once the battery's charged, do some drilling and uh, show you how to drill the holes and measure things up uh, using a HP pencil, simple. Uh, and obviously the physical brackets themselves uh, and putting the uh, markings through the holes, simple, and then taking the brackets away, pre-drilling the holes with a very, very, very small drill bit. Uh, and as you can see, it's very small. I want it to be smaller than the aperture of the wood screws themselves for obvious reason. We want that nice tight fit. We don't want the brackets coming loose at any stage. The screws that are included uh, in with the brackets are really not very good. Um, they're zinc plated, which is great, they won't rust. But the problem is, is that they're designed for chipboard, not solid wood, and they're very, very small. So if you want to zoom in for me, as you can see, they're very, very small little screws. Um, yes, the heads will butt up nicely, but so are these. Uh, these are a slightly larger screw and they're designed specifically for wood and we want wood We don't want uh, metal screws or chip rock screws. We want actual brass screws for this Okay, so yeah, all right guys um, moving on to the next part All right guys, so Now is the gluing phase. I've already screwed all the holes now. Don't keep in mind only half screwed I certainly went through one of them right through to the back. That's okay I'm going to use a bit of sticky tape to hold the glue in place with the screw the screw is going to go through regardless anyway, so it's not an absolute disaster. So to start with, because this glue uh, takes about half an hour to set, uh, as well as obviously it's wood glue, so it's quite strong and we don't want to get on your fingers, be careful. Now this doesn't have the most fantastic nozzle, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these out of the way. 
and move this out of the way because I want you guys, really want you guys to see this bit. This is important. Um, so we're all four in there, good. So what we're doing is, we're getting the holes. We're going to just clear, clean them out of any debris or any other wood that hasn't cleared out of there. Make them nice and clean. Now we're just going to get the wood glue. And we're going to squeeze it just on top like so. Now it looks like a lot, but keep in mind guys, we are putting the brackets on as well. Yeah. So the first bracket goes on. Um, this way. Make sure guys, once again, shiny sides up. It's got a bit of a curvature to it. And the flat sides, the side you want. So we're going to actually put maybe a little bit more glue on just for the purpose of obviously creating it strong, a strong bond as possible between the two layers. And if you have too much, easy wipe off, just get a tissue. Yeah? So you push it down. As you can see, there's a bit of overflow, it's a little bit too generous. First hole. And see how that's nice and tight. You can't turn that with your finger. That's cutting into my hand. That's a good thing. So what I want to do is make sure we're going forwards on our drill. You can always tell by the little arrows on your indicator on the side of the drill there. And we slowly, actually what we're going to do, is make this really simple. We're going to go from masonry down to one. We're going to see how the hammer works. And then also if the hammer is too strong, we don't cut, uh, not strong enough, sorry, we cut through the wood. This way it'll go in and stop. Make sure you've got the hole nice and centralised as best possible. See how it's grabbed? Now what's happened is because I've already half pre-drilled the hole, it's found its home. Instead of going in at an angle or whatever, there's glue in there as well, keep in mind, which is holding the screw in place for future as well, and the plate itself. Okay, so, drill in, hear that? So then we turn it up to the next rocker. Two. Right, still not what we want. Three. Here we go. Perfect. So we found that the hammer is free, and that's where we want it at. We don't want to over tighten these screws. They are metal screws, and we want to make sure that they're obviously not uh, going to be over tightening in the holes. Now I'm using a glass table. You guys can use uh, any kind of surface you want. Uh, just make sure. Uh, that your wood glue doesn't get stuck on any surface you're using. It will cause nightmares. Uh, and as you can see, you're going to have runs in the wood. And you've got to make sure that you've got a drop cloth or something. I'm going to use TJ's diagram for intensive purposes only. <laughs> Not because I think it's crap. I think it's great. It's just uh, it's easier. This stuff, you always got it in your finger like so. Going through. Stops. Happy days, right? So as you can see, there's actual overflow glue on the top. That's a great thing. That means our glue has really got in there uh, and is uh, doing the intended job. So, number one, bracket fixed, done, and sorted. Really simple. No cracking in the wood except for a tiny bit there, but you know what I do? More wood glue. Once again, just across the back. So when you're using cheap woods, you've got to also keep in mind, guys, that it's not always going to be the greatest, strongest wood you're using, and it's not always going to be, obviously, as uh, reliable as you want. But things like this are so easy to fix. All we're doing is just scraping off that excess, pushing it back in between. Now keep in mind, guys, this glue does set clear. So we haven't got to really worry too much about how this looks at the end of the day because the green screen is getting over it. So I'm going to do this on the other end and we'll continue on and then we'll come back and show you the next part of the video. Cheers. This is the frame put together. It's going to take about 24 hours to fully go off. Once we've done this side and it's all dried, then we can then look at doing the back side of it and then finally putting on the screen. So because this wood was cheap, um, it wasn't the most strong wood, as I was saying before, it was cheap. Uh, so a couple corners did crack, but I've just put a lot of glue on to solve the problems, as you can see here. Uh, or this corner. 
as you can see there's quite a bit of glue uh, there's tissues underneath obviously because there's a bag there holding it up um, if you've got a workbench that'd be fantastic but if you don't well you know you just can improvise like we have here but um, guys this is going to be it for tonight um, this is going to be the last of uh, the footage tonight but we'll come back tomorrow and we'll continue on cheers so this is the frame done I've put uh, gaffer tape around as well uh, now behind there is your flat 90 degree angle bracket your 90 degree um, bend bracket uh, which is actually in obviously the corners of the frame as well to get additional rigidity uh, I used uh, all the glue I needed and uh, now we're at the stage where I've gaffer taped it so one it doesn't damage the very delicate green screen and two uh, obviously we want to make sure that um, you know it looks presentable this is the back so it's not going to be as nice as the front but I just thought I'd give you guys a look and the bottom is the same as well so yeah guys um, this is the frame it's done it's a 1.8 by 1.8 by 1.8 by 1.8 square uh, it is exactly as, as described now what we're going to be doing next is the next last and final phase I've gone and actually bought some craft wood glue uh, I had to buy very specific glue because of the type of fabric I'm using is quite thin and obviously delicate at the same time is this is a hardwood and hardwood doesn't really take to thumbtacks and things like that which would have made things easy tests are already done and the hardwood's just too hard so I'm going to be using this spe uh, special glue which is made by Boyle uh, but I'll demonstrate that in the next part of the video so yeah guys um, she's uh, she's done and I'm pretty impressed with how well it's gone. It has taken quite a while for the glue to set. It does take 24 to 48 hours to fully go off. Um, I've given it about uh, a day and a half, so count those 36 hours, not even. Yeah, this is where we're at with the frame. Nice and solid. I've even written on the side halfway down, so I don't get lost in, in translation. If you can see it on the camera, top is here and bottom obviously the other end so I for reference sake know when I'm putting the green screen on which is the top which is the bottom and uh, yeah we'll go from there anyway guys I'll see you in a sec okay so uh, this is the craft glue I'm using boil craft glue and uh, yeah it's uh, water soluble at the same time it won't burn through fabrics or wood and it bonds them together really nicely it's made out of um, an acetate uh, something kind of job, but yeah, basically it's um, the right glue. I got recommended it. It does the job perfectly, supposedly so far. Now I'm just got to wait till it sets. So I've done the top and the bottom. As you can see here, there's the top, and there's the bottom. So as you can see, it's really, really nicely taut, full taut, no wrinkles. Um, now what we're going to be able to do when we've got these two parts dry. Here's got the sides. So the sides, as you can see, are a bit longer than the actual frame, but that's fine. What we're going to do is to create torsion or tension is we're going to uh, basically roll these sides up on, on themselves and create that tension and then glue them. Uh, I'm thinking about also maybe stapling uh, the fabric together. So a bit like the top. As you can see with the sleeving up there where I had it on the hooks before we might be able to do something like that just to create that nice reinforced tension across the middle because at the top here that's where the top is where the brush is I put it there just to remind myself because obviously I can't read the wood anymore but more importantly we want to keep this obviously as straight as possible and wrinkle free as possible as it is going to be a perfect green screen but yeah so this is stage two of the skinning of the green screen it is a lengthy process, but you know what, end of the day, guys, you know, do something to do it properly first time. I've shown you all the steps so far, and uh, it is time consuming, but you are going to save a lot of money compared to buying one off eBay, which is a much lower quality material, and so on and so forth. And those standards are huge and horrible. We're keeping it super stupid. Just got the rain coming down, guys, so I'll um, stop this here for now and come back when we're doing the sides. Cheers. Okay guys, it's starting to rain again, but I'm quickly going to tell you, um, this is the finished piece. That bit on the right hand side is just wet, so I had to get a mark off kids, right? But um, yeah, they'll dry and it'll go back to the same colour as the rest, but that is the finished uh, glued green screen, the back. Obviously up there where you can see the brush at the top of the screen. 
that is the top of the screen and down the bottom here is the bottom. So that's going to be standing up in the, um, in the uh, YouTube studio against the stand I've made up and we'll show you that next just before we put the green screen in place. But uh, look, so happy uh, with it so far. It is what it is, it is a green screen. It did cost under 30 US dollars. And at the end of the day, it's going to do the job perfectly for what I need it for. And uh, guys, I saved a lot of money compared to, you know, going and buying something off eBay, which is much lower quality. And look, I had fun making the green screen in the first place. I've had fun this whole project. Uh, a bit of, uh, you know, handyman woodwork. I'm not a carpenter by any stretch of imagination, but hey, I'm done, I'm finished. So hopefully this rain goes away and uh, I can finish having this dry and uh, we can get it into the YouTube studio and show you it in place and then do a quick demonstration video with it working. Anyway guys, um, yeah, not a hard job. The green screen itself obviously was bigger than the frame was as you can see with the curled sides. Uh, we were just uh, rolled it over, rolled it over and glued it. But guys, at the end of the day, um, cheap, easy way of doing it. If you obviously have to get your hands on a bed sheet, which is the same colour, which there are ones that are fitted sheet sets, which do have a flat sheet. You could do this as well for even cheaper. But, uh, you know, because I'm in Australia, we have access to hardly anything like that. And um, so on and so forth. So yeah, guys, um, green screen's done. I'll come back and uh, show you the, the finished product sitting in its place when uh, we get to that stage. All right, guys, cheers. Alrighty guys, uh, so this is the final piece, uh, excuse the watermarks, it's uh, been raining all day here, very heavily, and um, yeah, got some moisture on the cloth, but that'll dry out, but that is the finished piece, now I was going to show you behind, so bear with me, and I'll cut from here, and we'll go to the next shot, alright guys, so this is backing, now I could have put this up against the wall, obviously, and dealt with those curtains still. But what I thought is I might use some spare stuff I had lying around the house. Uh, they include an old coffee table with the feet that just happened to just perfectly marry up with the front of the coffee table so it stands uh, on its side without any assistance. And an old sign. It's about um, dancing in the rain. Not my song about dancing in the rain. Uh, it's what you make, my, make most of it, etc. Um, I've had it for a very long time, it was actually um, someone else's they gave it to me. And it got waterlogged at our previous property at the top there, I'm sure you can see. Is, um, yeah, it got all waterlogged and damaged and bent. So it's been sitting in storage, um, just out of the way for now. So it's something else that I thought that I could make use of. As you can see on the sides, I've rolled the fabric in to make it nice. That seam in the middle is a hemmed seam. Um, with uh, upholstery tape, uh, it's iron on stuff, and it works perfectly for the green screen tested a million times, and there's no problems at all with bleed out in the background. So, guys, that's my backing. Um, I can always, I guess, I can put it against the wall for further structural integrity in future, um, but yeah. And there's the setup there, so I've got more than enough space. My computer chair is way out from my desk at the moment, and this is uh, how I'd usually um, be getting into the chair, and obviously pulling it forward. So there's enough room to get past behind. Uh, if I'm doing uh, review work later on, as you can see I've done some cleaner. Um, do some review work down there. One, I can move the green screen without hardly any issues, uh, as well as, uh, yeah, obviously being able to get past with the uh, table down there with the review samples and stuff. Uh, what I'm going to also do now is, uh, in a couple of weeks, going to buy some shelving. And on either side of the bottom of the green screen here, i um, going to have uh, shelving on this side here, and obviously on the far side as well. And that's going to allow for me to have props that you guys can see in the background uh, when I'm doing different kinds of videos that, uh, you know, don't need the green screen. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to be green screening and maybe set my props up on some uh, shelving down there instead and we'll go from there but guys yeah this is uh, episode two and uh, how to make a green screen for under 30 us dollars hardwood solid and look uh, fantastic result other than the watermarks which will dry uh, and honestly guys it was so much fun making it um, hardwood is a bit of a nightmare to work with it does crack you don't get right into the center of, of the uh, piece of wood 
but at the end of the day, it's hard wearing it won't bow and it won't uh, lax, it won't uh, bow downwards and twist out of shape. That's why I chose hardwood and it was so cheap, I just couldn't uh, knock it back. It is hard to work with, but look at the end result. A very strong square frame. I put the 90 degree bracket flat brackets on, the 90 degree corner brackets in, uh, put the glue in and uh, gaffer tape the corners as you guys have already seen, and then put the screen on, glued it with a craft glue. I've got to do a little bit of trimming, as you can see here. But honestly, I don't think I'm even going to bother with that. You guys can never see it on camera. And look, it's it's solid and it's going to do me very well for a very long time as my green screen. So guys, there you go. Episode two of the studio setup. Episode three is going to be down here. And once we've got all this covered up with some nice black sheeting, I already looked at some uh, blackout curtains. They will do the job just fine and I'll just run them either side of the roller door at the top and that will solve that problem just with a bit of dowel and run it through once again that won't be in shop in the future i'll have the shelving behind me uh, with the ctt obviously in silver and uh citizen tech talk below that with the black drop sheet with the shelving in front of that with the props on it i'm going to have to get some more props at some stage i guess buy some more stuff I don't need for my computers but anyway um and yeah that's going to be the review set and more importantly, uh, before I do that, the episode three should include the Hue lighting setup that I'm going for as well to really show you the ambient lighting in the room uh, to really set it off, especially in my future videos. It's going to have that nice hue around when I'm doing the reviews. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. It was a bit of a boring one, but at the end of the day, you can make a green screen for less or better than you can get off eBay with those horrible stands by improvising and cutting, uh, cutting costs out. And look, having fun in a way, like, there's a lot of learning to do with this. I'm a bit of a handyman, I'm not a carpenter by any stretch of imagination, but it was fun. And look, the end result's fantastic and it's gonna look great on camera. It's gonna work perfectly for green screening and that's all I need it for. Anyway guys, thanks very much, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, peace out.